couple of presentations tonight. We're going to have to start with Drew, Drew Stevens from uh, Palomino Labs, right? Um, and he's going to be talking about Bench Press, which is an open source uh, stress testing tool, which if you're interested in using large data systems, it's nice to know that they will work under pressure. So I'm looking forward to hearing about that. And then we're going to have uh, five lightning talks, so in we're five to ten minutes on a wide-ranging group of subjects. We do we do lightning talks every now and then, and I think it's a nice way of sort of doing rapid-fire, um, you know, point-driven talks, and it's interesting to hear people's perspective. Just out of curiosity, who's first time at Big Data DC? Wow, a lot of you. So so thank you for coming. I hope hope you enjoy it. And um, you know, with that, Drew, please uh, kick it off. Cool. All right, I'm Drew Stevens. Uh, as Matt said, I used to work at Atlas, so I know a thing or two about what they do and their big data and their three and a half billion hits a day or something like that. Um, but I work at Palomino Labs now. It's a software development consultancy. Uh, we do uh, desktop web apps, native mobile apps, um, sort of anything you can think of. A little bit of big data, a little bit of low-level systems programming these days. Um, and we last year wrote a tool called BenchPress uh, for a client. Um, it was a tool, they wanted to be able to look at the different, uh, mainly NoSQL database options out there, MongoDB, HBase, Cassandra, anything you can think of, and compare them for their specific workload, uh, how they performed. Um, so we built that, we used it for, for them, we open sourced the bulk of the code for that, uh, and you can find it on GitHub, it's linked somewhere, but search for Ben Press on GitHub, you'll find it. Um, and the key thing that they wanted to do there uh, was had to be distributed because they wanted to be able to saturate uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet, uh, which you can't do for one machine. It's to have some exotic thing, exotic huge machine with 40 gig or something like that. So the easiest way to do that is to make it distributed um, and have multiple worker nodes that are attacking or testing uh, your database system. Um, uh, so we built BenchPress to do that. Uh, it's very flexible. Um, it'll do really anything you want because, uh, as we'll get into, uh, it allows you to define all bits of what's happening. So if you order the requests happen, what the actual requests are, how they're going to leave, and things like that. Um, you can do a sweet DDoS with it, uh, and it'll do most things. Um, first, I'll talk about the uh, other options that you may have heard of. Most notably is uh, Yahoo uh, Cloud Software Benchmark Tool, YCSB. Um, it's one that's quite similar to uh, BenchPress, um, but as with all three of these, it's uh, limited to a single host. It's not intended for multi-threading. JMeter or Grindr, one of the two, uh, will do a little bit of multi-host things. You can sort of coordinate, um, but uh, it's not very clean, and uh, doing the flexible things that we're able to do in BenchPress aren't really possible. So uh, it wasn't just a non invented here thing that got us to write BenchPress. We did it for actual real reasons, that the things that existed didn't fulfill our needs. Um, so BenchPress uses Zookeeper, uh, Apache Curator, uh, used to be Netflix Curator, it's one of the like, thousand things that Netflix has open sourced the past couple of years. Um, we use that to actually talk to Zookeeper, using Zookeeper uh, natively is difficult and somewhere recalcitrant. for the weak at heart. Okay. <laughs> for me, I found it a little bit difficult. Curator makes it pretty easy. Um, it's like sort of a file system that all of your machines can see. Um, and so we use that uh, curator framework to do our service discovery. Um, if you're looking at doing that, there's also a tool uh, also from Netflix called Eureka that's intended for service discovery. Uh, depending on what you're doing, that makes it better. But that's what we use. Um, so BenchPress has uh, a controller node and worker node. Um, the controller is the one that you submit jobs to. You say, attack this HBase cluster or Bench press this HBase cluster with this payload, yada yada. Um, the controller looks at Zookeeper, finds all the workers that are registered in it, and then locks them to be able to use them to run a test. Um, from then on, we use uh, all of the J things that Java uh, REST services use to communicate with the workers and actually do the job control. Um, so that's just a little background about what's happening. Um, so an actual job. Um, as I said, bench press uh, is very configurable, and this is a very small job definition. Um, small but functional. Um, the point of configurability is not that you can do, well, you want to be able to do anything in the world, but you don't want it to be a huge, cumbersome thing, which, particularly with uh, YCSB, they tried to make it very much that all you do is write some JSON, or write some, I think they use JSON, uh, write some JSON, and that defines your entire test, and uh, 
we distinctly didn't do that for bench press because when you try and shove everything into just a config file, config variables, it's hard to, it's, you can't gather all of the, all of the options. Um, so what we require is that you do a little bit of JSON and some code that we'll get to momentarily. Um, the salient points here are this is a test against MongoDB. That's what I'm going to be describing here. Um, this is a very simple one. All it's going to do is write two threads at a time. Uh, quanta is the total number of things that it's going to do. Uh, batch size uh, is how many in a batch before it does some fiddling that I'll get to. Um, and then we define how we'll generate keys and values. And again, this is a simple one, so it's just going to do increment, incremental uh, worker ID counter and uh, fill with zero bytes array, zero byte arrays, um, and then the size. Um, this uh, one of the special things here for uh, comparing multiple things is that you can write code in the background that um, works as efficiently as possible for each database. You can customize for each database, but then do the same exact uh, uh, test load um, on all the database. So that's what we did when we were testing MongoDB versus HBase versus Cassandra. Um, so what you do, <clears throat> there are two major bits of code that you need to write. Um, one is this task factory, and the next one is the runnable that we get to next. So the task factory is what um, is what BenchPress uses <clears throat> after it sends work out to the worker. <clears throat> Part. So when you submit a job to the controller, it it finds the, as many workers as it can. <clears throat> Part. Find as many workers as it can and informs them, informs them all that they're supposed to do some portion of the total number of requests that we want to make. Um, and then the workers get that information, the information about, uh, for the MongoDB example, like where to connect to, where the MongoDB server is, um, how many threads to concurrently use. Uh, and the main method that, that needs to be implemented is this get runables. So this actually takes uh, the aforementioned information in. Um, and then creates Java runnables uh, that will be executed uh, on the, number, the correct number of threads uh, on each worker. Um, so what we're doing here uh, is, that is sort of a note. Um, we are, for the number of threads that we're going to be creating, so one runnable per thread, we're creating a new database instance. So each thread has its own database instance, so there were no contention there um, whether or not, it doesn't matter if it's thread safe or not. Um, and uh, ideally, uh, it won't be blocking, waiting for other, waiting for other things to not be using the DB instance. Um, we're also using a, uh, oh, the key generator and value generator. So again, as I mentioned before, those can be anything you want. In the example we're looking at, uh, as far as the JSON goes, they're trivially simple, um, just uh, incrementing keys and uh, zero byte arrays. So, so is it against yeah. the rules for the workers to talk to each other? Yes, it is. Yeah, rules. Uh, the workers do not communicate amongst each other. Um, so, for something like if you wanted to have a uh, defined set of keys that you're stepping through and have that be replicable and have workers not stepping each other's toes, um, we've done that for a client. We use uh, uh, just seated random number generators, um, so then we we know what's coming next, um, and so we can. We've also actually done that. Um, I'll get. I'll talk briefly in a minute about another project. Don't want to get too off course. Um, so the actual runnables themselves are, again, pretty simple. I mean, we're talking maybe 100 lines of Java code here in total. Um, it uh, you know, stores some stuff um, and actually executes the request uh, here and on Quanta. So Quanta is one little Quanta of work. Uh, I have a mathematician friend who worked on this with me, so he likes words like that. Um, and uh, this is a method that BenchPress, the actual BenchPress framework, calls. Um, so you notice it just is a method here. Uh, and it does what you expect. It puts the thing into the database, into the collection in Mongo, and saves it. Um, and then this is one little special thing. In the JSON back that we were looking at, it said batch size 1,000. <coughs> and <coughs> for this one in particular, what we want to do after each batch, uh, which in this case is 1,000, we want to force MongoDB to do a file system sync. Um, so that's something that depends a lot on performance. If you're, if you do a synthetic benchmark like this without forcing something to happen, it can seem a lot faster than it actually is. Um, and so this is a place. This is obviously a very simple thing, but a place where you could say, you know, 
do read the last thousand things that you just put in. Something to make it more real world um, between each batch. Because in the real world, you're not just writing a whole bunch of stuff and then never looking at it. Um, so, if you've written that code, uh, jarred it up and put it on some workers and have it running, uh, then all you do is you just post the JSON that we looked at on that first slide to, uh, to the controller. It executes it, um, and then you can pull the job ID that it returns to you uh, to see when it's done. Um, and there's not much to show after that because all the bench press does um, is tell you how long it took. It tells you how many workers you used and how long it took. Uh, it's not giving you a lot of statistics, and that's mainly by design because the nature of how you want to use it uh, determines what the statistics are that you're going to want. Um, for a, a recent project that we've used this for, so we wrote initially <clears throat> to test a whole bunch of uh, databases, uh, or NoSQL data store thingamajigs, um, but what we've used it for most recently is a client who wanted their API benchmarked, and they just have a, uh, an XML RPC API, they're actually building uh, in parallel to it right now, REST API that's not being used yet, and what they really want to know is how fast the XML uh, RPC one is, um, so they can find bottlenecks from there, but then when they switch over to the REST API, is it just as fast, um, and more importantly, over time, what's happening to their uh, to the API, how fast it is getting faster, slower as they add more complexity and things like that. So, for gathering statistics there, um, we're using OpenTSTP, which is Open Time Series <laughs> Database, and it's meant specifically for time series data, which when you're benchmarking, that's pretty much what you have. At this moment in time, we had this event happen. And, you know, so uh, in this case, we're recording, the, the uh, most interesting one we're recording, the central one we're recording, is uh, how long the HTTP response took to come back. Um, so just the duration of the HTTP request. Um, so uh, BenchPress supports this uh, by you create your own. The red parts are, are classes that we wrote, um, and that's a simple thing. It takes in data from the workers after they complete each quanta and then sends it off to OpenPSP. And the notable thing here is that um, the actual benchmarking threads submit the data, or they drop the data that they want to submit to whatever thing is going to send it off to OpenPSP into a blocking queue and then never think about it again. So they, uh, the benchmarking threads themselves aren't blocked waiting to write out their data, so you won't uh, alter the outcome of your uh, benchmarking run. Uh, just because you're waiting to send data to record what's happening. Um, so we get out of that. Uh, this is OpenTSDB, your graphs pulling from OpenTSDB. Um, and this is, uh, for that client, this is a uh, box plot at each second of uh, how long the request took. And so here, you can't see the scale, it's 500 up to 2,000 if you're 2,500 at the top. Um, so they've got a good idea of where there are spiky times uh, in their in their uh, requests, and we actually correlate this uh, with some data about the JVM, uh, so when it's doing garbage collections, how much memory it's using, the CPU usage, um, and so it allows them really good insight uh, into how the API is uh, working. And so we actually run this every hour from Jenkins, um, or actually not every hour, uh, on check-in from Jenkins. And so it tests the API against their new code, and then be able to look at these graphs and pull up when, figure out when things get, get slower when they add more complexity, things like that. Um, so that's basically BenchPress. That was a very high-speed run through how you might implement BenchPress and what it does. Um, hopefully there are some questions about things that I may have glossed over. Just start with Matt. Well, and it's an <laughs> um, do uh, the distributed system do the requests uh, per second scale linearly with each new node, or is there some kind of overhead and coordination? No, they scale linearly. Yeah, the coordination, as Matt uh, uh, asked, they do not, the workers don't talk to each other. All of the workers do, they get a command from the controller and then they go off and start doing stuff, and when they finish, they report back to the controller. Yeah, there's no slowdown from uh, yeah, multiple workers. So. In your experience, now that you've tested various NoSQL databases, which do you find? Which one is the one to use? <laughs> yeah, I knew I was going to get that question. And I was hoping someone would just ask, well, is MongoDB the best one? That's when you show it. And the answer is no to that, uh, as far as MongoDB. What do you find is which one is um, better and what's 
It really depends on what you're doing. Uh, yeah. For outright speed, Redis uh, is it's probably the best for RAM. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Just if, if your data fits in a RAM. Like yeah. They posted this thing. It's like, hey, we saved $400 million by switching from Redis to Cassandra. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, no shit. <clears throat> memory costs a lot of money. Exactly, yeah. I mean, if you're going to be doing something that just can't fit in memory, um, then, yeah, I mean, it's going to be Cassandra in each base. Um, yeah, it, it, it depends on what the problem is. Um, I mean, it's just, it's like so many things we do. There's no, there's no one answer. Uh, sometimes there is. But. Have you compared it to something like MarkLogic? No. No. Curious. Mark Logic claims the they claim. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it'd be good to run against Oracle and yeah. MySQL and just see what happens. Yeah, I don't know. Really even thought about that. First, yeah. you need to universally yeah. a problem, and then. I mean, that's <laughs> again. It's sort of yeah, because what it comes down to is yeah, what was your problem like? Uh, and so of course it excelled on this one. Yeah. Vacuum bottle in Geneva is a universal data problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so I think you mentioned a couple of other tools, but did you look at Gatling? If so, why, why, why did that not? We did not look at Gatling, no. Have you used it? I have. And what do you think of it? I, I really like Gatling. Tool. How is it set up? Yeah, compared, it's not compared, compared to JMeter, it, you, know, you basically define <clears throat> uh, like recipes or scripts, mm -hmm. which can then you know either run independently or load data. So you can like take take all of your logs from your web logs and then run them through Gatling tool and it will automatically partition the logs a bunch of your orders and then fire huh. them against your wow. and it gives some pretty graphs back too. But you know it seems like there's some uh, yeah, absolutely. some yeah. relationship between between these. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, while my tool is the best, there are other tools out there. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't figure out my tool, you can just pay me and I'll figure it out for you. Has anybody used this to um, profile API rate limiters? No, we haven't done that yet. That's the, one of the next things we're actually going to be doing with our with our new client. So the, the client that we did the API timing thing with, they do... Um, uh, they process financial data from retailers and stuff like that, and so it's very bursty. Some retailers do things trickle in their transactions every day. Sorry. I said those retailers don't exist. Well, yeah, you worked in retail, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they said maybe some of them, but it sounds like the vast majority of them they at the end of the day. They say they're interested, but in the end, they run a mainframe that says you all the data once every twenty-four hours. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, and so things like rate limiting and. Uh, I mean, actually, a big one for them is they're starting to get, they're fairly small now, but they're starting to get to the point where there's just no way they can handle from, like, when they sign up, I don't know, Sears or something, there's no way you can handle all of those things at once as fast as they want to send them. So, yeah, the rate limiting or where they can put in queues to fix things. Yeah. What numbers of nodes have you used this across? We've only used it, I guess the biggest one we did was with eight <coughs> nodes, and we did, those were eight Amazon extra large, probably the c CPU extra large. Um, I want to do this with a thousand smalls. Is that reasonable? I don't see why not. I mean, there's going to be a little bit of the controller. We didn't write the controller thinking about a thousand, so you, you get a little bit of striation. Of it might take a couple of seconds to notify all the workers of the job. I mean, the, the job JSON is only. I mean, it's. So it's a few hundred bytes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> easy fix. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we could just use async HTTP client. We may actually be using that. So yeah, that's the only limitation. Is is, there's no latching mechanism. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You totally could. Can you do some writes and some reads? You can. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the simple one that I showed was just doing writes. Um, what you can do. Uh, um, you could, I mean, there's a couple of different ways about going about it. You could uh, say do X number of writes, 500 writes, and then every 500 writes read some number. But you can also write a more complex uh, job petitioner and say do some writes, do some reads, do some reads of those writes, do some reads of way prior writes. Um, that's what I was talking about uh, uh, using a seeded random number generator. Because we did exactly that with this client with the API. They wanted us to. Um, Submit invoices, submit like a thousand invoices uh, or thereabout, and then submit payment records for all those invoices. And so that's analogous to doing reads and writes, you know, sort of related things. Um, yeah.
Curator, is cur Curator a higher level than like ZK Client? Or yeah, ZK Client is basically just like set and read keys. Um, curator provides, uh, I'm going to get too hard code, but yeah, it provides a lot more easier to use mechanisms than that. Although at the end of the day, that's basically what we're doing is setting some data on a key and then checking it. So, yeah. How does your document generator compare to one in YCSB? Do you use the same pattern? No, so we do that all, we have a, a couple of very simple ones. Um, so things like a zero byte array or, you know, string of characters. Um, but you can write your own to do anything you want. Um, and have you looked at, actually I was just looking at YCSBs today, and ours is easier to write for. Uh, you take my word for it. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, going back to the, the thing about which is fastest, to get a good benchmark, you have to know something about your problem domain. And so if you know that, then you probably know the ways you want to do it. Um, yeah. Way in the back. What types of mobile apps did you come into? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a couple of stupid, simple games. Uh, we did a um, a wine rating client for a startup that still hasn't launched it yet. Um, so that's not on the App Store, but it was a, you know, a wine quiz and then recommends you wine and lets you rate them and share them with friends and do Facebook stuff. Um, and yeah. <laughs> what else do we do? Yeah, I mean, sort of, uh, if you got an idea, I'll talk to you afterwards, yeah. Let's just put up my actual very last slide. Um, so yeah, if you do want to send me an email uh, or talk to me afterwards, because um, yeah, if you have ideas, we can build them. That's sort of what we do. Or find me on Twitter. Uh, slides are actually already up on SlideShare, and there should be a video that hopefully you can hear me on after that.